So chapter 1.3 is converting between SI and Imperial. So now we're going to from just Imperial or just SI to converting between the two. So again, you'll need to use your data tables, so you'll have to have them handy for this whole section. Other countries like the US use the Imperial system measurement on the roads, like measuring distances and miles. But we also use uh, Imperial measurements for construction, like inches and feet. So I'm going to look at completing the following conversions. So the first one we're going to look at is 82 miles, and we're going to convert it to kilometers. So again, you need your data sheets. Uh, you have to find miles and how it relates to kilometers. So here, I see that miles and kilometers, there's a direct conversion right on my sheet, and I have one mile equals 1.609. 1.609. So one mile equals 1.609 kilometers. So that I know for every mile, there are more kilometers. So if I'm converting two kilometers from miles, there should be more kilometers, right? So that means I'm going to multiply by my conversion factor of 1.609. So if I multiply, use your calculator, you have 82 times 1.609, end up with 131.9. We'll go 131.9. So you should realize that, okay, there's going to be more kilometers. There are more kilometers, therefore it's correct. So 131.9 kilometers. Next one I'm going to look at is yards to meters. So again, use your conversion sheet. Here I have a straight conversion again from yards to meters. I can see that, okay, yards, there's going to be fewer of them than meters because for every yard, there's only 0.9144. So I'm converting 245 yards, and I need to have it in meters. And my conversion factor is 0.9144. So you have to figure out, am I going to multiply or divide 245 to get to meters? You multiply to get to your conversion factor, because I'm going from yards, and for every one yard, there are... 0.9144 meters. So I multiply by 0 0.1944. And you end up with 47.62. I made the mistake. 0.9. 144. Four. So I knew right away I'd made a mistake because it's too little. I know that a yard and a meter are almost the same. So 245 times by 0 0.9144. And I get 224. 0 0.02. 0 0.03. Next, let's look at converting from kilometers to yards, but before I convert from kilometers to yards, because I don't have the um, the two compared directly, so I look at kilometers on my conversion sheet. Hmm, kilometers, kilometers, oh here we go. Oh, here I have kilometers. And then I also have to look at yards, but yards are down here. So I'm going to have to do two conversions. First of all, I'm going to have to convert kilometers to miles. And then I'm going to have to convert miles to yards because miles to yards are over here. So first of all, I convert, convert from Imperial, oh sorry, from metric to Imperial, and then I can keep it in Imperial. Because once it's in Imperial, I can just use the common Imperial column to convert my measurements. So the first conversion I'm going to have to do is to miles. So I see that for every one mile is 1.609. So one mile equals 1.609 kilometers. So I know that if I'm going from kilometers to miles, every mile is more than a kilometer. So that means my miles are going to be a, there's going to be fewer miles than kilometers because I know that miles is a bigger measurement. So to get two miles, if there's fewer of them, 
I have to divide. I'm going to have to divide by my 1.609 because I'm going backwards this time. I'm going this way to get to my 1. All right, so I have 3 divided by 1.609 gets me 1.86. So I have 1.86 miles. Now I'm in Imperial. Now it's really easy to convert from Imperial to Imperial because I just use this one over here. And I look at miles to yards, which is right here, right? Miles to yards. And I see that it's equal to 1,760. Now, are there going to be more yards than miles? Yes, because yards are our smaller form of measurement. So from miles to yards, I'm going to have to multiply by my scale factor, which is 1,760. So I take my 1.86 and I multiply by 1760, 3,281.5. So I've converted kilometers to yards by using the method of going to Imperial first, and then it's easy to convert from within Imperial. I'll do another, uh, another example here with yards to centimeters. But first of all, there is no yards to centimeters. If I see yards here, it goes to meters. And then, let me see, what else do I have? I don't really want meters because, well, I guess meters would be all right too. What did I do first? I went from yards to inches. So I went to inches first, and then I did the conversion of inches to centimeters. There's many ways you could do this, right? So I'll show you the other way of staying within the imperial system, because this is going to be imperial. And then this is also imperial. Oh, I made a mistake here. This is metric, but it's also called SI. So we'll, we'll talk about SI units instead. So the first thing I have to do is convert yards to inches. Yards is right here. Inches is right here. It's just a straight um, imperial conversion. So it should be fairly simple. I'm going to a smaller form of measurement, so there should be more of them. So I'm going to multiply by 36. And 3 times 36, shouldn't have to use a calculator, but that's alright. If you do, that's fine. So it's 108 inches. Now I have to go from inches to centimeters, and right here. And notice again, inches and centimeters. Centimeters is a smaller form of measurement, so there should be more of them. So I should be multiplying by my 2.54. So multiply by 2.54, I get 274.32. Let's just double check to make sure it was 2.54. Yes, good. And my answer is 274.32. And that's how you convert when you have to go kind of in a uh, three-step process. All right, next example I'm going to look at. How many of these tiles, so I have a 9 inch by 9 inch, are needed to cover an area that is 10 foot by 8 foot? Notice I have some measurements in inches and some measurements in feet. Probably want to convert everything so it's in the same form of measurement first. So let's make these in terms of inches, both of them. Because then everything is in terms of inches and I can easily um, compare the two. So how many inches? Oh right, there's 12 inches in a foot. I know that already. We don't have to always go back to our sheet. So that means this is going to be 120 inches. Oops, I put it below. Keeps reminding me to align my cartridge. 120 inch inches, and then 8 times 12 should be 96 inches. So therefore, the area is going to be the multiplication or the product of the two. So 120 times 96, which is equal to 11,520. And that should be in inches squared. Now, what about each one of these things? It's 9 by 9, so I know that's 81 inches squared. So, how many tiles am I going to have to use? Well, just divide, right? Take your total area, divide by the smaller area, which is 81 inches squared. So I get divided by 81, and I get about 142.2. But we're going to have to round up because you can't really buy a 0.2 of a tile when you're going to a store. So you have to buy 143 tiles. All right, here's the your turn question for number three, example three in your textbook. I'm going to go through this example because there's a bit, a bit of a confusion um, 
as to even reading this, and it is a little bit confusing. So first thing I'm going to say, uh, do is use the diagram to determine the stopping distance during braking. Stopping distance during braking for 110. First of all, we have to go on our thing, find out where 110 is, and then we want the stopping distance during braking. The distance traveled during braking time, that's this one here. Notice that these measurements here are not those. These measurements here are actually the reaction time. All the reaction times. So for instance, when I look at the first one here, 22.9, which is what the one, uh, the, the meters that correspond to 110 kilometers per hour, that's just the distance traveled during the reaction time, which is 22.9 meters, if you're going 110 kilometers an hour. And what about the actual total distance? So the do distance to stop the vehicle for 110 is way down here, which is 110 or 101 meters. So the distance in between is actually the, yeah, the difference between the two. So I have to take 101 meters, subtract off my 22.9 meters, and that'll give me the distance that's in between, how long it takes, how long the, the car travels during the stopping time. So 101 minus 22.9, which is 78.1 meters. So the car would travel 78.1 meters during stopping time, between the reaction time and the time that it actually stops. Let's look at the next one. What is the difference between the reaction times for 80 kilometers an hour and 100 kilometers an hour? And I want the answer in feet. So let's look. Okay, so for 80 kilometers an hour, which is way down here, let's use a different color here, way down here, 80 kilometers an hour has a reaction time of 16.7 meters. The other one, which is 100 kilometers an hour, is over here. It has a reaction time of 20.8 meters. So let's see, what's the difference between the two? Because that's what it's asking for, difference. So I have 20.8 meters minus 16.7 meters which is equal to a distance of, so 20.8 minus 16.7 is equal to 4.1 meters. That's the difference between traveling 80 kilometers an hour and 100 kilometers an hour. But remember, it wants the answer in feet. So again, use your data sheets. Let's look at meters to feet. Meters to feet, meters to feet. Let's see. Oh, okay, well, here we go. I have one foot is equal to 0.3048 meters. So one foot is equal to point three, make sure I read that right, three zero four eight meters. Now I'm going from meters to feet. Smaller measurement, there's going to be more of them, right? So that means I'm going to have to usually multiply. But look at my scale factor. I'm going from meters to feet. I'm going from point three Four, zero, four, eight meters to feet. So this means I'm actually going to have to divide by this value because if I multiplied, I would know right away. Okay, so I'm going 4.1 times 0 0.3048 gets me hmm, 1.2. Well, that's less meters than I had to begin with. I should have more, right? But you should also know there, there's two ways to do that. Look to see where you're going from to. So I'm going from meters to feet. There should be more of them. But I'm also going to have to go backwards, so I'm going to have to divide. So I have 4.1 divided by 0 0.3048. And it gets me 13.45. So 13.45 feet. Again, just check to see if it makes sense. That's always another way to check, right? If you don't know when to multiply or when to divide, it's a good idea just to check to see if it makes sense. So that covers, oh, I have one more here. Convert 110 kilometers an hour into miles per hour. I forgot about this one. So I have 110 miles per hour, whoops, kilometers per hour into miles per hour. Do you remember the conversion? Here we are. So 110 kilometers per hour, and I want to convert to miles per hour. So I'm going from kilometers to miles. Miles is a larger form of measurement, so there's going to be less, which means I'm going to have to divide by 1.609. So I have 110 divided by 1.609 is equal to 68.37.
and that is in miles per hour. It's a good, really good idea to know how to convert between kilometers and miles because this United States and it, all, a lot of the performance cars, if you see the performance cars, a lot of the, um, the speeds that are given for those performance cars are in miles per hour. So you might think, oh, that's not very much speed, but if you actually convert them and multiply by the 1.609, you'll find the actual uh, speed in kilometers per hour, which is what we normally use in Canada. So there's an overview of chapter 1.3. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, just let me know.